All right, a lot of people have been asking about the Turnitin.com integration with Schoology, so you can have students submit work through Turnitin.com and use the rubrics that are in Turnitin.com and automatically grades it and puts it in Schoology. Uh, when you go to add an assignment, you actually don't add an assignment, you add a link external tool. Yeah, it is an external tool. Uh, you're going to need to select the tool provider all the way down. At the bottom is Turnitin LTI. That's what you want. This is where you're going to give the assignment its name, so I'm just going turn it in. I'll leave everything else the same. This is important if you want it to automatically do the math and calculate um, points into your gradebook. So you want to select enable grading. Uh, now regardless of what the rubric adds up to in terms of points or percentages in turnitin.com, it'll do the math for you in Schoology and it automatically update it. So I'm just going to have this assignment say I want to work 40 points. Go to due date. You've got to give it a category where it's going to go. Leave it at numeric and hit submit. Okay, so it's going to be at the bottom of materials. There you go. You're not done. You have to do your all your settings for turn in. If you're not familiar with how to set this up, uh, come see me or anybody that's used the tool and uh, te tell you a little bit more about that. Now you notice here that the default max grade is a hundred, and so within turn it in, uh, it, it you could it does its own math as well. Um, so like let's say it had a rubric. Um, that you had a rubric that was worth 15 points or something like that, and you got, you know, you, it added up to, um, you know, 7 out of 15, it's going to take that percentage and then give it points out of uh, 100. Well, it, then it's going to do the same percentage. Uh, that's not what's going to pop up. What's going to pop up in SchoolG is the 60 points. So just leave that at 100, I guess. Uh, you can put your assignment instructions here. Um, it's a little bit limited in, in the sense that you can't attach files and things like that, so teachers often... Uh, attach the files like in a folder and then include this um, uh, in that folder. Uh, so this is where the students submit. Um, you can put the start dates and all that. Um, I'm not going to get into all these features, uh, but I'm just going to show you. I'm going to. I made a sample rubric, okay, that I'm going to use to grade, uh, and then I'm going to leave this all kind of. All right, it's default settings. Okay, so I'm done setting it up. And now Dewey Dolphin, who's in this class, this is what he sees. He goes into that class. He's going to see this external tool, right, on the due date. He's going to click on it. Now what he opens up is the submission portal of that. So he's going to go upload submission. Your students can upload a submission in three ways. First, they give it a title. It's called file. They can choose a file. If you selected you know, in your settings, support all file types. Uh, it'll support a bunch of different file types, PDFs. And so, if, let's say you wanted to submit a PDF. You can do that, attach it, and it'll upload it this way. If you wanted the kid to literally just t copy and paste it from a file they already had, they can do it that way or type it in here. Uh, but I highly recommend using the cloud submission because most students are doing their uh, written work in Google Drive. And so, you would click, the kid would click Google Drive, and if it hasn't uh, attached to this is the first time they've ever done it it'll ask them to log into their google drive and they can connect their accounts let's say um biology pick something all right so let's pick this molecule right there of that file all right so they can see the work count they can review it if they want and then they have to click submit to turn it in all right, they're done. Okay, they see the file name right here. Uh, they can download it if they want. Uh, they can get a receipt to show you, download a digital receipt. Okay, now let's go to the grading part. Okay, so I'm going to grade it now. All right. So I would see a list of all my students that have uploaded their assignments right here. Okay, so you can see a list right here. I'm going to go grade it. So it's going to open up the... Same window that you would see if you were in the Turnitin account. Uh, I'm not going to get into all the features of Turnitin. So I attached a 20-point rubric. So let's see. I'm going to grade it. And let's say they got, under evidence, they got a 3. Okay, so they got 12 out of 20. So that's six, so let's do that's 60%. Okay, uh, yes. So that's let's do 50%. There you go. Easier. So my rubric was out of 20 points, 10 out of 20, that is 50%. And 
Uh, if it was worth 100 points, it would have been 50 out of 100. Okay. But remember, we're not using this. I gave the points was in Schoology. Okay. And so you can see they they think they have you know a fifth a grade is 50, which that's why I highly recommend you just leave it at 100. Uh, their similarity report is 57 percent, so they can check that out. They can see that. Um, now I'm going to now go to my gradebook in Schoology. Uh, remember, I made it at oh, I made it at 40 points. Okay. So you can see, there he is, Dewey Dolphin, got 20. I set the, the thing worth 40 points. It did the math in uh, turnin.com and gave me 20 points. Um, because I don't, I don't, you don't want to have to recreate rubrics um, to add up to the points uh, that you want it to. You just make the rubric at a B percentage, or it doesn't matter what it is, because it's going to calculate that and automatically update it. If you have any questions, let me know.